Women's basketball team welcomed head coach Coatwiz Washington's alma mater, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, to the Bryce Jordan Center. A thousand seat student section known as the Roar Zone. It's an elevation that's the highest allowed by law. This game, the club recalled catcher Tony Sanchez to make a second stint with the team this season. And they also put Travis Snyder on the 15 day to yell with this conference's left big toe. Thursday night marked the beginning of College Hockey America Conference play for the Penn State women's ice hockey team as it hosted Robert Morris. The bricks will be located on the stadium's west side allowing fans to leave their mark on Memorial Field. What has been a year of first for the Penn State men's ice hockey team, there's one first they've not been able to accomplish it either at home or on the road, a Big Ten win. Saturday night, the Nittany Lions welcomed number 10 Michigan to Hockey Valley looking for that first. As with Central PA ties taking part in the black and gold practices, players from Connecticut will be gone. But when the Nittany Lions return to the ice, another Minnetonka native, Hannah Resman, will rejoin teammates Bowman and Peterson. Penn State women's ice hockey program has just completed its second year, but there's one thing that they've had that other programs have had to spend time building, chemistry. On the 2013-2014 season roster, the Nittany Lions have had 13 players that were previously teammates with other teams. Here's the breakdown. Four players came from the Pittsburgh Penguins Elite and from Detroit Honey Bates. Three more players transferred from the University of Connecticut, and two more came from Minnetonka High School in Minnesota. Head coach Josh Brandwing says he enjoys having the familiarity in his lineup. That's a wonderful added bonus. You know, they're all here on their own merits as individuals. Fabulous people, great hardworking students, incredibly talented hockey players. And then again, we have the added bonus where some of them come from programs they've played together before, uh, same high school program or same elite program, and, and that's certainly helpful as well. For a pair of freshman forwards gives them an opportunity to continue a relationship they've had since they were kids. Laura Bowman and Amy Pierce are part of three state championships at Minnetonka High School in Minnesota. Amy and I have been playing on the same line since we were in grade school. Um, we have some chemistry that most people don't get to experience in their lifetime, and it really does help having her on my line. We have a lot of chemistry together, so we know each other are on the ice, and it's just a lot of fun playing with Laura. While they're teammates now, freshman forward Joe Holcroft says the opportunity to come together with some former competition has brought back memories from when they were just getting started. A women's hockey is a small community anyway, so we do hear about each other all the time. Um, so it's kind of fun hearing each other's perspective while being like, oh yeah, I did play against that team um, and we played against you. It's kind of funny now that we've come together on the same team and now we know each other and we're great friends. Kate Finney is the head coach of the Pittsburgh Penguins Elite U16 and U19 teams. Can't feel as if the small community that is women's ice hockey will benefit the future of the program. I think some of them do choose to um, go to schools where their friends are or at least to learn about new programs that way. So um, I think it's only beneficial that the girls have had such success and have been at Penn State. Um, and Penn State can use that to their advantage for sure in, in recruiting that, that for the next um, generation. The players from Connecticut will be gone, but when the Nittany Lions return to the ice, another Minnetonka native, Hannah Resman, will rejoin teammates Bowman and Peterson. Friday night marked the beginning of a new era in Penn State hockey as the Nittany Lions hosted Army. It was the first time Penn State took to the ice for a home game in the new Pagola Ice Arena. And speaking of the Pagolas, Buffalo Sabres owner Terry was front and center for the ceremonial faceoff. Defenseman Nate Jensen scored the first goal in the Lions' new den on an assist by Taylor Holstrom for the early 1-0 lead. The Knights had limited answers from Matt Scoff as he stopped 24 shots on goal on the night. Penn State started to pull away in the third as Curtis Loic on the breakaway. Burris a shorthander for a 2-0 lead. David Goodwin added another tally just for good measure as Penn State rolled on to a 4-1 win in the opening night of the Pagola Ice Arena. After the game, Coach Dygadowski credited Scott for staying up to the pressure playing on opening night at the Pagola. He, he had those experiences and and proved that he could be successful in stressful situations which and intense situations and this we knew would be like that I, I give him a lot of credit for being very mentally tough it was very easily to get caught up in everything and he was as we expected very mentally tough after a road trip to Air Force the Nittany Lions will host RIT here at the goal line Serena October 25th puck drop set for seven o'clock reporting in Hockey Valley Matt Michaelone PSN TV Sports
WTAJ Sports in high definition. Good evening, everyone. Ahead of today's Pirates game, the club recalled catcher Tony Sanchez to make a second stint with the team this season. And they also put Travis Snyder on the 15-day DL with this conference left big toe. The Bucks also finishing a series with the Marlins this afternoon, looking for the series victory with the win. Garrett Cole looking to improve to 6-3 on the year as well. Bucks up 1-0 in the second inning as Clint Barmas with hit to shallow center. For an RBI single, bringing catcher Russell Martin, putting the Pirates ahead 2-0. In the bottom of the fourth, Marlins battling back with runners on for Ed Lucas as he hits the grounder up the first baseline. Fair ball, John Carlos Stanton waved around to score, the, putting the I mean Marlins within one. They tie up the game and then Stanton up to bat in the sixth. He smashes this one deep to center field all the way to the Flamingos as the Marlins take the lead 3-2 and they would hold on for the win. Garrett Cole finishes with eight strikeouts, and Marlins rookie Jose Fernandez nails down 13 Ks. The Pirates begin a five-game series with the Cardinals tomorrow in Pittsburgh. As for the Altoona curve, they're going for the weekend sweep in New Hampshire against the Fisher Cats. Casey Sadler activated from the disabled list after getting hit by a comeback a few weeks ago. The curve pull off the sweep 7-3 against New Hampshire. The guys get tomorrow off before beginning a homestand on Tuesday against Binghamton. Triple ABA out to a regional championship. Johnston Realty against Youngstown for the title, and Johnston gets going early. First batter Mike Marcinko with the flyer to shallow center field. Good enough for a leadoff single. After a bunt and a bad pitch, he makes his way to third, and then Kyle Mero smacks this one all the way to the fence in left field. Marcinko scores easily, putting a runner at third. Mero gets in with an RBI double. Jordan Ferretta finishes off the inning with two outs and gets a piece of it, sending it to the outfield. Two more runs would score, and then Altoona goes off from there. Johnson Realty grabs the regional title with a 15-1 win over Youngstown with Nationals next week in Johnstown. To football, the Pittsburgh Steelers continuing training camp this weekend, and a few guys with Central PA ties taking part in the black and gold practices. Johnstown native LaRod Stevens Howling is among them returning to his home state. He returned to the Steel City after spending time with the Arizona Cardinals. He was drafted by the Cards in 2009 in the seventh round, and in 2012, the pick grad has best year yet. He put up 356 yards on the ground and four touchdowns. Yeah, it's, it's comfortable going to my fifth camp, and it's, you know, back at home. So it, I mean, that's the comfort part of it, but uh, it's, it's still camp, and it's still work to do. So uh, that's the strategy each day to get better out here. Another guy hoping to see time with the Steelers this season is rookie wide receiver Justin Brown from Oklahoma. In 2012, he racked up 879 yards and five scores. He was taken by the Steelers in the sixth round of the draft. Most of you remember him as the former Nittany Line wideout. Brown transferred to the Sooners for his senior season, and he says making that move was not a decision he made lightly. You know, you're talking about leaving, you know, your boys that you were, you were friends with for three years, you know, so um, it was tough, but that's why, you know, I tried to ask and talk to them about it before I made that decision, and once I felt like they, they gave me the okay that I could do that, and that's why I went and did at Steelers practice tomorrow, the black and gold will suit up in pads for the first time, so we'll have more from training camp tomorrow as well. Meanwhile, in Eagles news, former quarterback Don McNabb is back in Philly, but not playing, obviously. But he will be officially retiring from the Eagles tomorrow. McNabb has been out of the NFL since 2011 and spent 11 of his 13 years in the league with Philly. He led the Eagles to 100 wins, five NFC title games, and a Super Bowl appearance. And finally, at the Brickyard 400 at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, a pretty eventful Day, no big crashes or anything. 27 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson is the leader. He pits and takes four tires instead of two, which costs him almost 18 seconds. One lap later, Ryan Newman in second takes just two tires, and he would take the lead from there as he completes the pit cycle. He would go on to win the race. That's his first win at the Brickyard 400. That'll do it for sports. WTAJ News will be back after the break.